Greetings and salutations. We have another lab cast coming at you. This time we are talking about carts, specifically caution. Oh, no, no, there we go. Oh, Matt, actually, I should not put this in the other glass. All right. We're looking at these dynamics carts. They are square or well, rectangular ish, they have wheels, and they fit nicely onto tracks. We put them on a track and we can push them and they go. Whee! If it's you know actually level, it probably keeps going. It doesn't roll backwards. That probably suggests this is not super level, but it is level enough for our work right now. The lab that we're about to do is going to be about producing motion graphs of these carts. We want to be able to make predictions of them and we want to be able to test them. Now, making graphs can be super tedious, which is why we have our friend the motion detector. Actually, the motion detector too. It can pop up. You'll notice it has two modes, cart mode or person basketball mode. Um, we're going to go into cart mode. And the basic idea, this is going to send out a, uh, well, probably a radio signal, I guess, actually, but not entirely certain. A series of clicks, sort of like sonar, effectively. And what it does, when it's on the track, it's going to be able to record the distance of the cart from the sensor. And you might ask, why do I care about this? Well. If we plug this motion detector into our handy dandy lab quest, I thought this was, oh, yep, lab quest two. I just can't read the two against the coloring. Um, we'll get a nice graph made out of it. And so it's going to make a very good position graph for us, a pretty good velocity graph for us, and a serviceable acceleration graph that we'll never really use. So, things we need to know. We're going to use a Digisonic cable to do this. You know it's a Digisonic cable because it fits in the Digisonic port. Ta da! Hoo. Like so. And then we need to plug it into our lab quest. So if we look on the top here, we can see faintly written into the kind of rubbery plastic, digital one. So we're gonna pull open the digital one thing here. And we're gonna go into the digital one slot. You'll notice this has started clicking. If I put it, for example, in channel one, which it looks like it'll fit, it in fact, doesn't fit. You can do this for quite some time, and unless you really force it something fierce and break the whole thing, it's not going to fit. Instead, the G1 on the top, little hidden. Wah. All right. So now it's clicking, and if I look at my sensor here, it reads out a position. This thinks that it is 0.2 meters away. That seems woefully inaccurate, given that it's separated by about you know two centimeters. So what we're going to do. We use the stylus that's kind of built into this thing. Oh God, I'm wrapping my finger in it. <sighs> Almost lost the pinky. That was terrifying. I'm going to click on the sensors button. Doop. And we are going to zero the motion detector. That's probably still not a good idea. Let's actually put it zero away and do this. Boop. So now this is the zero position for our motion detector. As I move the cart away, whoop you'll notice the position increases. As I move it towards it, decreases. As I go like this, it begins to really wonder what's wrong with its life. So fast movement, not the best thing in the mode right now. If we do want to actually have fast movement, we're going to collect data. You'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a play button. This is going to record. You'll notice the clicking became very quick. And as I move it, I can now make a sweet graph showing here. This one, a little more annoying, kind of weird. We need to kind of take this with a grain of salt. There are going to be parts of the graph, mm, probably should not use multiple fingers. There we go. There are going to be parts of the graph that are very noisy. So you can see it's kind of bumpy and that's where the velocity graph gets weird. We want to focus our attention instead on the bits of the graph that are smooth and reasonably consistent. That is going to be where the good kind of juju is for analysis. Now, when we want to get data off of this, we're going to connect it to the computer via this USB cable. It's going to go on the USB cable here on the Lab Pro. And then I'm going to head over here to the USB port boop, 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 on the computer. When this happens, 
assuming it works. Probably should have tested this before because this one clearly isn't working. Um, it's going to pull up Logger Pro. Oh, it might be working. It's just busy loading the device. Well, we can pull up Logger Pro on our own. Logger Pro. Not about logs or logging, but about, um, well, actually it's kind of about logging, but about data. So, if everything goes according to plan, and it did, ta-da, a box appears. Remote data has been detected. Would you like to retrieve the data now? Yes, I would like to do this. I'm going to insert this data into the current session, like so. And voila, the graphs have transferred over. Now, some things you might want to pay attention to, the scale of your graphs is going to be important. So this first graph, the position one, we can pretty clearly see what's going on here. It's chilling out at rest, and then it starts moving away. However, this, oh, no. Oh. This velocity graph, on the other hand, a little harder to figure out what's going on, and that's because the scale is a little weird. So by right-clicking on the axis, we can kind of go over here to graph options, axis options, and we can change the scaling. Scaling. Hopefully it's visible. Bottom right of this box. We can go, let's say, auto scale from zero. And give that a shot. Nope, still fussy. Let us try instead a manual scale. And let's go, looks like from zero to one should give me some good information. Nope, that was time. That's why that was weird. It turns out that it's important when you're doing this not to be actually scaling your x-axis, but instead your y-axis. Y-axis over here. If we make the y-axis, then this actually works, shockingly enough. So now we've changed the scale, we can see all of this information that had previously just been kind of squished. So, these are the basics that we want to worry about for now. We want to worry about being able to get stuff off of the lab quest. We want to be able to use this to get our data, and then get our data off of this onto the computer. Usually that should work by using the USB cable. Sometimes the USB might be a little finicky, and these can be, uh, you can pull it off wirelessly. I'll help you with that if, if, uh, if it's kind of having an off day. Once we have our data in here, it's a matter of making sure we can read the graphs and actually see what's going on. Um, and that's just a matter of changing the scale under graph options. All right. Look forward to playing with motion detectors and uh, making some graphs for ourselves. See you guys later.